good to be here today, and it's always a pleasure to stand behind this sacred desk, and I don't take it lightly, and, and I don't care if it's a big crowd or a little crowd, Amen. because I'm going to proclaim the truth of the Word to you this morning. Amen? Amen. That's what we're called to do. That's why we preach the foolishness of preaching. So this morning, I'm going to act like a fool in front of you. Amen? And sometimes my 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 son gets embarrassed. He's 16 when I preach because I use him for an example. So he knows better than come with me when I go out. All right? He does sometimes, but he's my greatest example when I had him come with me. But i uh, been busy the last month or so. I've been doing Sundays and Wednesdays for different pastors, filling in for them. So I thank God for uh, the opportunities and and I can be that one that can come alongside pastors and support them and and, uh, and always support your pastor. Always give him encouragement because they don't get it enough. Amen. Because Amen? this evening when I get home, guess what? I'll have all these voices in my head. <laughs> Amen? The enemy comes like a roaring lion. Yeah. All right? He has a roar. Yeah. He will roar. But he has no power. Amen. His, he's a toothless lion. A toothless lion. <laughs> Amen. Jesus has knocked his teeth out on Calvary. Amen. Amen. And I love reminding him he has no power. All he has is deception this morning. Amen. Amen. If you feel like you've been spoken, uh, been roared at this week, you just tell him that's just a roar. Hey, that's just a voice that I don't have to listen to because my Redeemer has taken care of it all. Amen. 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 We love the the music that's been picked today, and we always. Uh, Thank God for the Holy Spirit coming and preparing the ground. And I thank God for the liberty to preach. And I feel the liberty already. Amen. Amen. Let's make our way to John chapter 6, verse 53. And today we're going to be talking about the blood of Jesus. John chapter 6, verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, uh, you can stand, I'm sorry. Stand in honor of God's word, reading of God's word if you're able. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This terminolo- terminology addresses what he did on Calvary. Christ would give himself on the cross for the salvation of all mankind. You must fully believe in him is what that is saying. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. And for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The idea here is one must continue eating and drinking even on a daily basis. And we'll talk about that more here in a little bit. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, I live by the Father. Say, he who eats me, even shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He who eats of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue, uh, he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore disciples, when they had heard this, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does does this offend you? What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit who quickens the flesh and profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, were who believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, except unto you that no man come unto me, except it was given unto him by my Father. From the time way of this disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? Then Simon, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? That's what I say this morning. You have the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that ye are that Christ and the Son of the living God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word today. I thank you that it is living, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. And Lord, I pray that right now that your word will go forth and penetrate each and every heart that may be listening to this in this uh, congregation live or on, on the video, Lord. We just thank you that your word will go and accomplish what it, it is meant to accomplish today. There's power 
in your word today. So, Lord, I put myself aside right now. I need you to come alongside me and be, let me be that vessel that may speak on your behalf today. Not that I am anything, but you are everything. I need every bit and every ounce that I have this morning from you. So, Lord, I hide myself behind that, that cross. And, Lord, let not the people that hear see Scott. Let them see you. And, Lord, we give you the praise and give you the glory for it. And, Father, I thank you for this word coming forth as fire. And let, the, the, let their hearts be like dry grass this morning. And let you do your work within your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So today we're going to talk about the blood of Jesus. You may say, well, Scott, that's the wrong message for Connection Baptist Church. Our pastor preaches about the blood. I'm here to tell you this morning, the blood can never be over-preached. The blood can be never be uh, over-spoken. Amen? Amen? It's all in the blood. Amen? Amen? Jesus took it as far, you must drink my blood. You may ask, well, we got to drink blood. we gotta, we got to have communion and drink it. No, no, no. He was talking symbolically that we should drink and eat his, his, his flesh and, and drink his blood. Amen? That means we consume all of him. Amen. Amen. We need to consume all of Jesus, not parts of Jesus. No, just consume Jesus from that day that you stood up and you heard an altar call, you heard the gospel preached, and that morning when you received Jesus, that is not all the Jesus that you needed to receive. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You need to receive of Jesus each and every day, afresh and anew. Yeah. Amen? The, the grace and the blood that I had yesterday is not enough for today. Amen? I needed a fresh and a new this morning. Oh, Lord, I need your touch. Lord, I need your blood this morning, Lord. I thank you that it is the cleansing blood of Jesus that makes me clean. Amen? It is a continued cleansing. Amen? Come on. We need all of Jesus, and that's what he's telling his disciples there. Listen, the modern-day church is, is the same as these disciples that walked away. Yep. They don't want a bloody church. They don't want a church where, where the man of God stands up and may spit a little bit and may be talking about the blood. They don't want their little congregation with the white carpets and, and the beautiful pews uh, stained with the blood preaching of the gospel. Amen? I'm here to tell you this morning, I will never get behind a pulpit without preaching the blood. Amen? It's all in the blood. Oh, the, the gospel shouldn't be a bloodless gospel. Amen? It ought to be a blood gospel. A great preacher, and I won't name his name, but he was a preacher when he first started his ministry. And because some people don't like him, and I'm not going to mention him. All right, you might know who it is. He was a preacher at the beginning of his ministry, and uh, from a, a, a professor from Cornwell, Cornell uh, University. And he was told, he told him, he said, "Hey, if you want to go around the world, if you want to reach multiple people, you've got to leave the blood." You can't go and, and preach the blood to the to the world worldwide audience. Amen. Come on. Listen, it's in our churches in America. The American church don't want to talk about the blood anymore. Amen. Oh, we in, in the, the passion of the Christ. When I first started going out, I was I was knee deep in uh, youth ministry. I had a, a youth group. It was big, but the parents didn't want me to show them the passion. Oh, that's going to scare our kids. What are the, where's those kids today watching play bloody movies? Amen. Oh, yeah. Why not share the, the what Jesus did on the cross with them? Won't show the what their sin did to the Almighty God that came out of heaven. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Why do we have these mindsets? And listen, I got I went along with it. But where are they at today? They need to see the blood that Jesus spilled. Amen. I love watching that, not because I get joy out of it, but it shows me, Lord, I thank you for what you did for me. Yeah. My sin put you there. My sin, you was on your, I was on your mind every stroke of the, the, the cat of nine tails that was on your back and the flesh came off. I was on your mind. Yeah. Amen? I was on your mind when every nail went in your hands and in your feet. I was on your mind and every uh, bit of blood that came out was for me. I thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we got to see it. Sometimes we need experiences. That's what Jesus is saying here. We need to experience and see in the spiritual world what Jesus Christ did for us, church. It's not something that was just at the altar the day that you received Christ. Every day we ought to be, be reminded of the blood and the flesh and what he did for us on Calvary. 
And I think we forget it. You know what? We talk a lot at Easter time. We talk a lot about the, the Good Friday, and we get excited about the cross, but we leave it alone the, ne the rest of the year. Oh, our churches should be filled talking about the blood. Amen? The power is in the blood. Mm. The only thing that gives life and power to our preaching is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus makes the word alive. It is the blood that terrorizes Satan and every demon in hell. Amen? Oh, Satan don't care about nothing, but when you mention the blood, he's scared of it. Amen? Because he knew on, on Calvary's hill when the precious blood of Jesus came pouring out that he was defeated. Amen? Oh, when he looks at you, church, he sees the blood. Amen? Oh, I'm here to tell the enemy today, the blood of Jesus washes me clean. Amen? Hmm. You say, well, Scott, why are you hollering? Scott, you're not from here. Scott, why are you so comfortable? Because, I listen, I know what you get the rest of the time. Amen? <laughs> I watch a lot of it. I watch probably every ser uh, service y'all have later or not during it, but after. And I feel sorry for some of you. Good. Or Tom, I bet you, Tom, you're so relieved. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, brother. <laughs> He's over praying now, let his car break down that I can have another week of rest. <laughs> no, we don't want his car to break down. All right. <laughs> if I get a text this evening that says his car broke down, it's my fault. Man. <laughs> the blood sets the captive free. The blood guarantees my salvation. We're not saved by church membership. It is good, but it does not save us. Amen? You're not saved by water baptism. You can go down in the water, uh, a dry center, and come up a wet center. Amen? It's in nothing like that, but it's in the blood. Amen? It's not doing good works. You're not saved by morality. You're not saved by religion. You can have a cross around your neck, amen, without Jesus in your heart. And I call that missing heaven by 18 inches. Man, imagine that church. Imagine someone sitting in a church that's heard the gospel over and over and they get it here and not moved it here. That breaks my heart. You know why I get up here and scream and holler? Because it's the foolishness of preaching that will get to man's heart. Right. Amen? God said that. Scott didn't make that up. Bill Johnson didn't make that up. J.R. didn't make that up. God said it is the foolishness of preaching. Teaching is good, but God uses preaching. I had a, had a, I might have told this last time I was here. I, I, I'm a contractor, and we go in this uh, building store, and the guy, I was talking to a guy there, and he said, man, our church plan is doing so good. And he was inviting me there, and he said, you know what? Our preacher doesn't preach. He teaches. Oh. And I'm thinking, wow. Yeah. I mean, he was kind of excited. You won't, get, you won't get preaching when you get to our church. Oh, he won't ruffle your, your feathers at my, at my church. Oh, he won't have no passion or, or desire to see somebody get saved at my church. Yeah. God uses preaching. I'm here to tell you now, if anyone comes in this church, listen, it is good to have teaching, but the preacher needs to preach. That's right. I don't like even like having these services where we, and y'all don't do it here, but you have a music service or a cantata, that's great. But you don't let the you don't sit the preacher down and say, hey, we're gonna have a full blown cantata service. No, no, no. You give time for what? The preaching. Yes, right. Amen. You mm -hmm. never take away the preaching. It's the blood that saves. A bloodless theology is a dead theology. A bloodless church is a dead church. Amen? Oh, you might be saying this morning, Connection Baptist Church, Scott, we don't have many people, but I'm here to tell you, as long as you got the blood here, this is a live church. Amen? Amen. No matter the number. That's right. That's right. I want to encourage you this morning. Amen. Don't think that you're a dead church. You, If you're a blood church, guess what? You're in a live church. Amen. Mm. American churches are being flooded with what I call hot tub Christianity. This is what that means. That makes you feel good and adjust your sin is the message. Just jump in this little hot tub of your mess of sin and just adjust to it. 
Oh, just wait a minute. We'll bring a counselor to you and, and make you comfortable in the sin that you're in. Mm. Come on. I'm here to tell you now, if you're uh, overtaken in sin, the only thing that's going to set you free is the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 You know what can clean out every drug addiction uh, treatment, and that's good. It's good to have treatment. I have a nephew that just went through it. Uh, all that's good, but I think they all can be cleared out if they get the message of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Right. You know why I can say that? Because I was delivered by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Mm. And I know what he did for me, he can do for them. Mm. So we have the power, church. We have the power in the blood. Our Lord Jesus did not die for imaginary sins, but his heart's blood was split to wash out the deep crimson stains, which nothing else can remove. Spurgeon said that. Amen? Mm -hmm. It wasn't imaginary. It was real sin that put him on the cross. God turned uh, his eye away from the Lord at that moment, Jesus, because of our sin. Amen? The wrath of God went on him. There's no death of sin without the death of Jesus Christ. God is holy and God who hates sin. God's hatred of sin is no false hatred. It is real, it is living, and it is active. Y'all yeah. saying, well, Scott, you're preaching a holiness message this morning. I'm here to tell you God still hates sin. Right. Amen? Amen? And the church of Jesus Christ keeps on uh, coddling those in sin. And not giving them the message that takes care of the sin they're in. And what is that message? The blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is the message. So, it must manifest itself, the wrath of God. God's wrath at sin must strike somewhere. Did y'all hear that? The wrath of God <clears throat> to sin must strike somewhere. This is good news. Mm -hmm. And where did God's wrath strike? Jesus Christ. Amen? Behold, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Isn't that good news this morning? Nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins has hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Before we can know God's power in our lives, in our service, Sin must be removed to get rid of the separation between God and us. It is Jesus' blood that removes that sin. Isn't it good news this morning? Mm, that is good news. Hebrews 9.22 verses through 28. This is what it says there. This is what Jesus did. 9.22. Hebrews 9.22. If you want to make your way there. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Wow. Without the shedding of blood, he wasn't, Jesus wasn't killed on the, the cross because of the Roman government uh, persecuted him. Amen? He didn't go to the cross because they, they found fault in him. Amen? He went to the cross to shed his blood. It was a blood that was giving. Amen? He went to pay a price for you and for me. He was willingly went to the cross. And almost all things by the law purged with blood without shedding. Verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the pattern things in heaven should be purified with these. Everything that pertained to the tabernacle and all its sacred vessels was a copy of that which was in heaven. And as much as the vessels in the tabernacle were touched by men, they had to be purified by blood and animal blood. But the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. Christ did not enter the earthly tabernacle or temple regarding the offering of his precious blood on the mercy seat which are figures of the truth. All right, verse 24, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Isn't that good news this morning? Jesus didn't go into a tabernacle. He didn't go somewhere that was made by man's hands to take care of our sin. He literally went to God and took care 
of the sin debt that we had. He went there and put his blood on the mercy seat in heaven. Amen? Oh, that's good news this morning. Oh, that means that that is a forever sacrifice. That's a forever an atonement. Amen? They used to have to take animals' blood in these tabernacles and the, the things in the law. They had to do that each year. They had to continue to do it. And some of the priests, they better be holy when they went in or had, had their, the blood cover them because they had, a, had little bells attached to them. Amen? And if that bell quit ringing as they was moving, they got pulled out because the glory of God had struck them dead. Aren't you glad God doesn't move in that anymore? Amen? We have one that we come by faith and receive, and his name is Jesus. We receive his sacrifice and his plan for redemption. Amen? Man, that's good. And as we go, we must know the power of the blood. If we're to know the power, if we're to know uh, our experience of the word, the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of prayer is depending on knowing the power of the blood. Did y'all get that? Anything you want to do in the Christian walk is dependent on your knowing of what how powerful the blood is. That is good news to me. It is the knowledge of the power of the blood. It's all in the power of the blood. So let's get to it. Atoning sacrifice. An offering to God for sin, Romans 3.25, whom God sent forth as a propitiation by his blood. An appeasement of anger is what that big word means. God was appeased for us by the shedding blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that good news? He was the propitiation for our sin by his blood through what? Faith. Isn't that good news? It's by our faith faith in the blood that gives us an appeasement by our God. You ask me, well, Scott, what is faith? Faith is a big word. I need to have 15 or 13 or 25 classes on faith to understand faith. Can I give you an easy illustration this morning? Every one of us has faith every day when we walk around this world. You go to a light switch and you might have a good electrician. I hope it works. And you have faith that light was going to turn off or turn on. You have by faith that this right here, when you grab this, you're opening a door. Amen? By faith, you come in here and you sit in a chair. By faith, you don't even think about it. You're walking in faith every day. So all God is telling us to do when you hear the gospel, when it is preached, and very rarely it's really preached, he said, move your faith. And we've got a world of lost sinners out here that has been, been duped by the enemy and been tricked by false preachers in pulpits and churches to tell them that they've got to have all this. You've got to do this, 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 and this. Jesus said this way, if you had a little mustard seed of faith, y'all know a mustard seed can get lost in a flash, can it? Oh, you can lose a mustard seed right now. You can have a bunch of them in your hand, and the wind can blow, and you can never find another none of it because it's going to blow away, and you're never going to find it. That's how little a mustard seed is. Isn't that good? Isn't God gracious? Someone can listen to this video or come in here and have a little bit of faith. Lord, what I'm hearing today, the gospel, hearing that you paid a price on the cross for me, hearing that your blood was shed for me, they move a little bit, they inch a little bit. God can use that faith to save their soul and get them away to heaven. Amen? Amen. Remove them from darkness to light. Oh, it's good news, church. Oh, we have, we are, we are, we walk around with good news on our lips every day. But what are we mostly doing? We're giving bad news. Come on, can I hear an amen? I'm a bad news bearer on Monday morning. Everything's going to go wrong. Nothing's going to work out. I'm honest. Oh, we're never going to get none of this stuff. This building's going to fall. That was not going to call. This was not going to happen. Bad news bearer, Scott. <laughs> but I need to be good news. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Oh, I need to repent from that. Amen? Amen? The Lord keeps dealing with my heart. We have good news, church. We all have a smile on our face, not happiness, but we have a joy. Amen? A joy down in here. full of. We, we have a joy full of mercy. Amen? 
We have joy down in here. And we call this the bowels of mercy. And y'all say, well, Scott, don't use that. Americans, we don't talk about our bowels. <laughs> but the Bible, you know why God used by the Holy Spirit bowels of mercy? It said this, that I don't remember where it was at. Well, it doesn't matter. You can correct me later. But Paul's writing to a church and he's saying such and such was, he was, he refreshed my bowels. Oh, y'all looking at me thinking, you're crazy. Why in the world are you saying that? Why are you even mentioning it? Because that's your inner being. That's the deeper inner being. Listen, I don't want to come in here and be a surface guy. I don't want to just get here and try. I want to, when I come in here, I want to refresh your inner being. I want to encourage you and know and encourage you what you have in Jesus is enough. Amen? It will see you through. Amen? It will get you to the golden shore. Amen? Oh, what you have in Jesus is getting you to the streets of gold. Oh, what you have in Jesus is taking you up to heaven one day. Amen? Oh, what you have in Jesus, the great trumpet will sound. And guess what? Those who are alive and remain will go meet the Lord in the air. Oh, that is my, my hope. Nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Amen? Amen? Oh, you have it, church. It's all in the blood. Listen, in verse 25, what I just read to you, that uh, his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the thin, sins that were previously committed. That forbearance means he had tolerance. But now that tolerance People don't like, we in the dispensation of grace, I understand that. But God is not winking no more. He calls for all men to come to repentance through Jesus Christ. Amen? He is calling all men to repentance in this hour where we're in. Because he knows that on the cross, Jesus was it. He was the best that he had, and he brought him here. And mankind keeps on spitting on him. Man, mankind keeps rejecting him, amen? And God is not winking any longer, is he? That's why I get here and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, because I know God is behind that message, amen? And one day, a man and woman will, will die, and after this, the judgment. Just did a funeral yesterday. The man walked his whole life without Christ. Wouldn't show up to church. The wife kept coming to church. They've been married 50 years. But can I tell you how good God is? So we started praying the last month for him. And he received Christ. Amen. I was reminded the, 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 the parable of, of the, the hireling that the man went out and he hired somebody at 6 o'clock. Right. He hired somebody at 9. I'm going to just paraphrase. He hired somebody at 12. And then an hour before it was time to quit, he hired more. But when he got done to pay their wage, he paid them all the same wage. That's right. Listen, even though at the last second, the last breath, he called upon the Lord to be saved, guess what? He gets the reward that we got. Amen. No matter if you got saved at five, when you got hired at six, basically, or you was 21 like me and, and it was about 12 o'clock, Listen, he received, that's how gracious our God is. Amen. Amen. He is a good God. So, God did not take sin seriously. It wasn't that God didn't take ser uh, sin seriously before that. The cross of Christ removed all doubt. The cross is a public declaration that God is righteous in the way he has handled, handled human sin. It is not near, merely covered, but removed. Atonement to cover all over and to purge and restore. The restoration of God to sinners that repent and put trust in the, the perpetuary death of Christ is what God is calling all men to do. Listen, man changes and is reconciled to God. God does not change. Listen, we're in the church, we're telling people that in sin without receiving Christ, that they can change God's mind to accept them. I'm here to tell you now, God doesn't change. He has never changed. 
Oh, the New Testament didn't change the God of the Old Testament. It fulfilled the Old Testament. Amen? And we have churches and American churches telling the congregations, telling those who may attend, guess what? God understands who you are and that great, and I'm not trying to get something, but Jesus gets us. No, 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 no. We need to get Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. It ain't about that he gets us. Yeah, he gets us. We're sinners lost, getting ready to split hell wide open. That's right. And now we need to repent and get him. Amen. Amen. Man, it feels good to be in church. I can holler hell. Nobody looks at me weird. Amen. Amen. I'm serious. It is sad what you see once you go out and see different churches. Oh, hell, I, once I see that face gets all, all like that when I do it, I holler it more. Amen. <laughs> it becomes my amen. Hell, hell, hell. <laughs> It's where, ha where most majority of people are going and we're not talking about it. Mm. And I don't say that with a smile. It should break our hearts. If we understood what hell was, we would not not share the gospel. Yeah. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God gives us his own answer to the, the tremendous, uh, to this question of God being... Uh, I need a uh, clock. I'll keep y'all over. Here you go. Look up here. Up here. All right. Man, I got all kinds of time. <laughs> when I come here, God stops time, and y'all saying, "We well, ain't stopping for us." We're <laughs> but when I stand behind there, friends like, "Man, I just got here." All right. Thank you, brother. I'm. I say I don't pay attention, do I? I can't miss that clock. All right. So for, uh, God gives us an answer to the tremendous important question. If he is mad at sin, there's hope for us because God himself has provided an appeasement. Amen? The shed blood of Christ has sent forth Jesus Christ as a propitiation by his blood through faith. Romans 3.25 declares the wrath of God at sin strikes him instead of striking us. The prophet Isaiah glimpsed this 800 years before the, even the birth of Christ. This is what Isaiah, isn't that amazing? If you're doubting this word, I'm telling you that should convince you. Here's a prophet 800 or so years before Christ was even born prophesied this scripture I'm getting ready to tell you. There's no other book like it. Amen? amen. They try to burn it. They try to outlaw it. But it keeps living forever. Amen? Yeah. And it never will fade away. Isaiah chapter um, All we like sheep gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid literally made to strike on him the iniquity of of us all. All right? This is the scripture. This is what it means. Strike. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Did y'all hear that? He struck Jesus, laid on him the iniquity of us all to have us redeemed. And I have a, it's in my truck. I should have brought it in. I have a big railroad tied now, and I, I, sometimes I take it and I, I strike it. Amen? I think sometimes we need to hear the strike. We need to hear the strike of the wrath of God that was put on him for us. Amen? Oh, sometimes it does good to hear and see and smell that the Lord is good. Come on. Hmm. He's good, church. The first power of Christ's blood is a sin offering providing a target and satisfying God's holy wrath. Isn't that good? The, the first thing is a sin offering providing a target. Listen, I'm not the bullseye for God's wrath no more. Jesus took that bullseye. Oh, he took care of it all for you and for me. He took the bullseye. He took the target for mine and your sin. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 6 through 8. This is what it says. He becomes our Passover. Your glory is not good. 
Those people had taken liberty and to license the sin. Did y'all hear that? In the Corinthian church, they took their liberty in Christ to sin. That needs to be preached in many churches today. Oh, you know how much how much drinking is accepted in our churches? And people get outright mad at you when you say, hey, you probably shouldn't drink. It don't lead nowhere. I've never met someone that told me that they started drinking and their life got better. Did, have you? I haven't. And, and listen, I know that I can't drink a beer. I drink one beer, I'm not quitting. And guess what? I might be down at the county jail. So I think I'm going to sit here and stand before you and look you in the eye and say, well, i got the liberty to drink. No, I don't. Because guess what? I can't handle it. And listen, your liberty to drink might offend someone like me That's right. and hurt me because guess what? If old such and such can do it, I can do it. And I'm down at the county jail and destroyed my whole testimony. Mm-hmm. Come on, is that another way to look at it? Yeah. Listen, I used to love uh, snuff. <laughs> Why can I do snuff? I had a preacher from West Virginia who said, well, them preachers out in West Virginia, they had the spit tune in the pulpit. Right. They just spit down in the spit tune while they're preaching. Come on. <laughs> Why would God ask me to get rid of it? Because I shouldn't have. And y'all look at me and say, well, you, you're uh, bound to something. Look at the stomach you got. And yeah, I need to get rid of the chocolate and the snacks at night. Amen. <laughs> I got the things I need to work on. Amen. But I knew all the times I threw the can out the window. I needed to get rid of that bondage. Yeah. Amen. It was bondage. Yeah. And how in the world, if, if someone comes up to me and they want to, they need to know Christ, <laughs> and I got this big wad of snuff up in my mouth and it's in my teeth, and I'm up on them and it's coming out, and how how's that giving God any glory? Right. They're not going to receive Christ. Right. Listen, the world has a more uh, standards on us than we have. That's true. Right. Come Amen. on. They're going to look at you and say, well, why in the world is he found with that nasty stuff? They don't know the Lord at all. They don't know nothing about that word, but they will look at you and say, well, I thought he was one of them church people, one of them Christians. They have a higher standard than we do, and that's a shame. So I start thinking about that now. And it's took me 20 years to realize that, church. Oh, it doesn't mean, well, well, Scott's one of them perfect guys. Your pastor tells you over and over, don't believe and don't think you know someone when they stand behind the pulpit. You don't know their their secret life. It's true. See, that's where I get hurt. I tell about my life (laughs) too much. Because you go, no, man, that guy, that is a mess. Thank God he's got Jesus. Amen. Amen. (laughs) But listen, here's the difference. I want to please him. When I get up tomorrow morning, I'm going to thank you, Lord, thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. Keep your heart, continue, drink the blood, and eat the flesh. Amen? That's what I'm telling you this morning. Keep your mind, keep your heart, keep your faith in the flesh, in the blood of Jesus Christ, and you'll be just fine. Amen? That's why I don't care. The discipleship and the things I've done over the years, I know without a doubt. I know they're not, they're not following me, but I know what I give them, they can be disciples. I know they can walk in victory because I know what I'm giving them out of this can lead them to life. And lead them to, listen, I'm spitting all over here, so don't sit in this chair next to me. I see it coming out. I'm sorry. These two right here, you can tell, man. I don't like all this spitting. But... But what you give them, the blood, the blood will cover them. Listen, don't worry about that one that comes to Christ and well, how are they going to make it? Are they going to make it in their Christian walk? Continue to tell them, look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith, and he will see them through. And the blood of Jesus will overcome all the things that's on their path of life. Amen? It's in the blood. So there was glory over their liberty. Do you not know that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Did y'all hear that? Mm-hmm. Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump. This is 
He was talking to a Christian there, wasn't he? This morning, the Holy Spirit, his conviction, his revelation is telling someone in here, get the leaven out. Purge it out. If it is doubt, purge it out. If it is sin, purge it out. If it is being a, downy, uh, a Debbie Downer like me, purge it out. It's no place in a, in a child of God, is it? We have the hope. We have all of it, church. Debbie Downer shouldn't be, be in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. And guess what? Churches are full of Debbie Downers. <laughs> you know how I know that? Because I shook, shook about 100 hands last week. And most of them was Debbie Downers. Mm -hmm. Amen? Therefore, the old leaven that you may be a new love, start acting like what you are, a new creation. Amen? Mm -hmm. As you are in leaven, speaks of the position that one has in Christ. That is our standing. Listen here. It is the business of the Holy Spirit to bring our state up to our standing. And where is our standing? Jesus Christ and nothing else, is it? For even Christ, our Passover, is a sacrifice for us. That means that it addressed all sin. If you have any condemnation in you, you tell that condemnation right now, Jesus was my Passover. He took care of all of it. He addressed every bit of it. I don't care how gross it was. I don't care if everybody looks down at you. That sin was taken care of on the cross. Mm -hmm. And he's your Passover. Mm. Yep. Therefore, listen, that word therefore means this. For that reason, since he's your Passover, Jesus being our Passover sacrifice, let us keep the feast. It's meant to serve a symbol of the Jewish Passover when all leaven was purged from the household. Did y'all hear that? You need to keep the feast, Christian. Listen, you don't get saved and live like a junkyard dog. Amen. <laughs> you need to keep the feast. You need to keep drinking and, and eating the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. Once you start keeping that feast, church, there'll be liberty. You know why everybody's a Debbie Downer? Because they're not keeping the feast of the Passover of Jesus Christ. They're letting sin have dominion over them. Mm. Not with old leaven, old sins committed before conversion, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. It refers to the ways of the world from which the child of God has been delivered. Everybody say, I have been delivered, I have been delivered. From, this world. from this world. Come on. Listen, you're delivered from it. Jesus said it this way, I have overcome the world. We keep complaining about our president and our politicians and this one going this way and our school systems. I'm here to tell you we have overcome this world through Jesus Christ. Oh, this world is not my home, church. I'm just sojourning through, amen? I'm a pilgrim this morning. It doesn't mean I don't get involved in politics. I vote. It doesn't mean that we don't do some things to try to change our 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 government or, or our world. Listen, I ain't saying that, but listen, don't let it get you down so much that you say, well, there's no hope. I'm just going to hide out in, in my house and not do nothing. Hmm. No, 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 no. He's asking us to go forth and be lights in this world. He's asking us to go out and preach the gospel. Mm. But with the unloving bread of sincerity and truth, it can only be attained by one's uh, faith being solely anchored in the blood of Jesus Christ. Anchor your faith. Anchor it in that blood this morning. The blood of Christ covers all sin. And this is a big thing I'm going to say. Some of y'all say, well, you're, you're a her heretic. Y'all know the potentially. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Potentially, the whole world is saved. I'll look at you. Man, what is he saying? I said, potentially. You know why I can say potentially? Listen. The vilest sinner and the most stubborn unbeliever blasphemer 
And John 2.2 2 says this, we read, And Jesus is the propitiation, the satisfaction for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, the, this pertains to the fact that the satisfaction is as wide as the sin. Amen? If men do not experience its benefits, the fault is not in the efficiency of the blood, it is in man. Amen? All man has to do is receive by faith the blood that Jesus shed, and guess what? They're saved. So Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, his blood was shed, and potentially the whole world could be saved, but they're not, are they? They're not going to receive the grace and the mercy God has, has given us through Jesus Christ. Amen? But potentially, that ballast sinner, that murderer, and I know that's hard, can be saved. Oh, his, his, his satisfaction on the cross goes deep and wide and takes care of it all. By the shed blood of Christ, a basis is provided on which God can deal mercifully with the whole world. All of God's dealing in mercy with men are the grounds of the shed blood of Christ. All the mercies of God on man since the fall of Adam is on the grounds that, that shed blood. Without the shed of blood, good, uh, blood, God would cut the sinner off once in his sin. Amen? R.L. Torrey was asked this. How could a God have dealt in mercy with sinners before Christ came and died? He answered, simple. Jesus is the Lamb who was slain before the foundations of the world. Revelation 13.8. From the moment sin entered into the world, God had his eyes on that sacrifice that he himself prepared before the foundations of the world. Isn't that good news? Oh, Jesus was looked to since the foundations of the world that he would redeem mankind. God was looking from there to this. Listen, the blood offers forgiveness, Ephesians 1, 6 through 8. To the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he's made us accepted in the blood, in whom Jesus we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, a remission of penalty, according to the richness of his grace, wherein he is abounded toward us, grace being manifested toward us, and superabundance again made possible by the blood of Jesus and all wisdom and prudence of each moment of time. Forgiveness of sin is not something a believer in Jesus is to look for in the future, is it? It is something we already have. Paul said that we have forgiveness now. Isn't that good news? You can be guilt-ridden when you walk in here, and all you got to do is say, Jesus, thank you for washing me clean, and confess your sin, and forgiveness is given to you right then. Amen? You have forgiveness now. It's not a future thing. You have it now. That's good news to me. Oh, blessed is one who has learned to rest in the peace of Jesus gives, who counts his sins forgiven because of Christ's blood and shed. And God says we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Jesus. All right, verse four, uh, number four, continuous cleansing. In 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. That means this. If we keep our fellowship with God, we don't break it, the light is in us. Amen? But, listen here, if we keep in fellowship with one another, if we claim fellowship with him, we at the same time walk in the light, which is the sphere of his walk. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. This describes a total cleansing, a continued cleansing. Isn't that good news? The completeness of the forgiveness we get through the blood, and it cleanses us continuously, keeping us clean every minute, every day, and every hour. Jesus on the cross saves me from the guilt of sin, the power of sin, and Christ coming again will save me from the presence of sin. Amen? When cleanse, cleansing is mentioned in the Bible in connection with the blood, it's always cleansing from guilt. Amen? Cleansing from the power of sin and presence of sin is by the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, and living and indwelling in Christ. There are so many people walking the streets out here that have guilt. And Jesus' blood can take the guilt away. 
It can make you white as snow. The blood of Jesus has the power to wash the blockage record. It has the Isaiah 118. This is a great scripture, and I'm not going to get through none of these notes. We'll get to close down. Isaiah 118. Come now. Isaiah 118. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they should be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they should be as wool. There's no greater invitation found in the Bible, which the Holy Spirit penned, that we just read through Isaiah. This passage tells us sins are spoken of as a scarlet. All right? Many of us in here today don't understand what scarlet means. Amen? But such has a reference to blood guiltiness. All sin is blood guiltiness. That's why he said our sin makes us red. That's why it's scarlet. Because every sin has blood, guilt all over it. You have shed, you talked about someone, you slashed them, you basically killed them. It means you're guilty and you're, you have blood guiltiness and sin. All sin is murder in some form. This glorious passage it illustrates to us the eternal truth that no matter the evil, the wickedness, the deception or the way to sin, the Lord stands ready upon proper confession and repentance to forgive all and cleanse all sin. At stake, all done exclusively by faith in Jesus and his shed blood. Amen? We all have a black past, for if we could see our past, God sees it before it is washed by the blood of Jesus. The record of the best of us would be black, black, black. My son received Christ at five years old. I kind of always beat myself up because I wasn't home the day that he come to his mom and he told his mom and he, and he was guilty of sin. He'd come to the knowledge that he was a sinner. I was at a camping trip with a youth group for the weekend. So when she called me, when I finally got service, we was out and she finally called me a couple days later and told me that that my son had received Christ, I kind of got mad and said, Lord, why couldn't I be there? Mm. Why couldn't I have been the one that, that sat him down and, and showed him the gospel and, and, and let me see him receive you? And I'm telling you, he's a good, he's a good kid. Don't mean he's perfect. So the other week I was thinking, man, my son, he's pretty good. Man, he, he does. He's got a heart towards God. He tries to do right. I barely rarely have to correct him. He picks on me a lot, but I know that's him. But he's just an outright good kid. I'm not saying that because he's my kid, but I was thinking, man, he ever going to know the, the dirtiness of sin and the stain of sin like his daddy. I was 21 years old, and I couldn't have went no farther. At 21, if I would have kept on another 10 years, I would have been dead. I would have looked like I was 80. I was, it was bad. And the Lord just Put upon my heart the same blood that you needed, Scott. He needed it. Amen. Amen. The same, no matter what you're in this morning, if you feel like you're black as black, or if you feel like you've been moral, that you've been you've been right with God and you've done everything right, guess what? You need the same amount of blood as I need it. You know why? Because Adam's blood is in all of us. You know why my son needed his cleansing of the blood of Jesus? Because he had his father's blood in him. Y'all know the, the blood of the father uh, dictates the, the son's uh, blood type? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my parting this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea, 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Isn't that good? Listen, don't let it just be a hymn. You know why I end it with that? Don't just let it be in him. Don't let it be just something that you sing and you read the words and it doesn't get here. It's nothing but the blood, church. If someone wants to come and play and y'all say, all right, you need to shut up and close up. That's good, ain't it? Shut up and close up. And as we end, there's no more dead works. How much more should the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit Justify the ungodly through his shed blood. You don't have to do all the religious things anymore, do you? To be right and atone your sins. Dead works is dead. Man, that's satisfying. The blood of Jesus makes me right. Not all the things I do for him, I do for him because I love him. And I'm thankful for what his blood has done. God's own in Acts 20, 20 through 8, we read, Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Did y'all hear that? God purchased us with his own blood. He said, well, Scott, does God have blood? It just said that God might have some blood. Amen. His blood, the Father's blood, like I just said, was flowing through Jesus' veins. That's why it's so important that Jesus was born of a virgin. Because he didn't have the blood like we had. He had the Father's blood. And it was only that blood that could redeem us. So this morning, I'm here to, to encourage those who are here. And if you're a believer this morning, I want you to be encouraged and strengthened by that one fact. The blood is washing you. The blood has atoned you. The blood has redeemed you. It's like this. I want you to understand this. Every day, have the blood over the doorpost of your heart. In the Old Testament, they put door, blood all over the door. They went down even as they walked through the door. And the evil one couldn't come, and the death angel couldn't come in, could he? I'm telling you now, church, we need the blood every day. We need to walk in that blood. We need to proclaim that blood. We need to tell the world about this blood because it was God's blood that purchased us. We're not our own anymore, church. We're his. He purchased us. And God forbid that we think that we are our own. Listen, I like being mean. I like being a little redneck kind of guy. But that's not Jesus. I need to die, said Lord. Scott doesn't want to be Scott anymore. You purchased me. I want to do what you tell me to do. I want you to want me to go where you tell me to go because you have bought me. This evening, you might go to a store and buy something. Imagine that thing that you bought looks at you and talks to you and says, Hey, I know you just bought me, but I'm doing my own thing. Come on. Know that Jesus has bought you God's blood. So today, you might be here, and I don't never tell anybody in a congregation that, that you're family and that you know the Lord, because I don't know. You might be sitting here for 50 years, and today, the Holy Spirit might convict you. And you might be watching, but today, you need to know, how do we let the blood of Jesus flow through us? The Word of God is the Spirit, what blood is to our bodies. We are to let the Word abide in us. And the word says this, call upon the name of the Lord. Repent and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. 
acknowledge Him as your Lord. Romans 3.23 says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So you know that you're a sinner. You know you have fallen from the glory of God. You know that, you, that you're guilty before God. And you need this blood. I want to tell you, you can have this blood today by confession. That if you should confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and should believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, with the heart man believes in the righteousness, with the mouth confession is made into salvation. The gospel is Jesus died on a cross and he shed his precious blood for your sin and for my sin. He paid a price that none of us could pay. He became sin for us. It's the great exchange. It's good news this morning. And I can't end this service without telling people that he gave the greatest exchange ever. He took our unrighteousness to give us his righteousness. So today, everyone, all Christians here, support those who might be listening that needs to pray a prayer like this. This prayer doesn't save you, but I needed someone to teach me how to pray. How about you? This new thinking of, why do you do the sinner's prayer? Because I know when I needed a prayer, and somebody had to lead me in prayer because I didn't know how to pray. And someone might today need to be led in a prayer. The prayer doesn't save you. The faith in what I've just said about the gospel saves you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Say, so, Lord Jesus, I thank you right now that you shed that precious blood on that cross for my iniquity. I respond to that scripture now that God laid my iniquity on you on that cross that day. And this morning I confess that I'm a sinner and I turn from that. I change my mind on the way I'm going and I turn towards you. I repent. And I want to confess you as my Savior. But not just Savior, but now I want to ask you to be my Lord. I want you to come into my life and come into my heart and lead and guide me through your spirit and help me walk this walk. And I thank you, Lord, that you hear this prayer. Your word says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I thank you right now. As I call upon you, you will come by the spirit and cleanse me and renew me and help me. And Jesus, I thank you. Amen. I want to thank you, church, for putting up with me. You get filled next week. And we have the uh, contact information. If you prayed that prayer, please contact the church. And Pastor Bill, he's a great disciple. How many thanks God for your pastor? Come on, let's give God praise. Give God praise. I know you don't like it, but I have to do that anyway. Listen, we praise God for people, not the people. Because God has him here for a reason. Amen? I know you don't like recognition, but we got to thank God for him. Amen? Because he's got to be obedient to do what he's doing. So remember this season at 5, 445, 445 here at the church. And 5 o'clock at the place. And you'll uh, load up and go to the ice cream at 5 o'clock at the... <laughs> huh? I'm treating. Sure? Yeah, I'm going to drive the bus. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's pray before we go. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. We thank you for the story. This is my story. This is my song. We thank you for the story that each and every one of us has, and it's through the shed blood that you shed for us. So, Lord, I pray your comfort upon each and every person and under the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord, that you've encouraged and strengthened them by your spirit and your word this morning. And we pray for Pastor Bill and Diane as they travel and, and are back and, and they get back in the pulpit Tuesday, Lord. And we just pray for strength, pray for healing continuously to be on his body. And we just thank you for Connection Baptist Church. And I thank you this morning, Lord. My prayer is for them to be encouraged that they are mighty because they're a blood church. And, Lord, they have power here because they know about the blood. So, Lord, we thank you and give you the praise and glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Amen.